Question 11. What type of locking occurs during the snapshot generation? Answer. Locking depends on the type of replication used. In snapshot replication, the snapshot agent locks the object during the entire snapshot generation process. In transactional replication, locks are acquired initially for a very brief time and then released. Normal operations on a database can continue after that. In merge replication, no locks are acquired during the snapshot generation process. Question 12. What options are there to delete rows on the publisher and not on the subscriber? Answer. One option is to replicate stored procedure execution instead of the actual delete command. You can create two different versions of the stored procedures, one on the publisher that does the delete and the other on the subscriber that does not do the delete. Another option is to not replicate delete commands. Question 13. Is it possible to run multiple publications and different type of publications from the same distribution database? Answer. Yes this can be done and there are no restrictions on the number or types of publications that can use the same distribution database. One thing to note though is that all publications from a publisher must use the same distributor and distribution database. Question 14. Data is not being delivered to subscribers. What can be the possible reasons? Answer. There are a number of possible causes for data not being delivered to subscribers. The table is filtered, and there are no changes to deliver to a given subscriber. One or more agents are not running or are failing with an error. Data is deleted by a trigger, or a trigger includes a rollback statement. A transactional subscription was initialized without a snapshot, and changes have occurred on the publisher since the publication was created. Replication of stored procedure execution for a transactional publication produces different results at the subscriber. The insert stored procedure used by a transactional article includes a condition that is not met. Data is deleted by a user, a replication script, or another application. Question 15. Explain what stored procedure counters is used for. Answer. Counters is a system stored procedure that returns information about the transaction rate, latency, and first and last log sequence number LSN for each publication on a server. This is run on the publishing server. Running this stored procedure on a server that is acting as the distributor or subscribing to publications from another server will not return any data. Question 16. How will you monitor replication latency in transactional replication? Answer. Tracer tokens were introduced with SQL Server 2005 transactional replication as a way to monitor the latency of delivering transactions from the publisher to the distributor and from the distributor to the subscribers. Question 17. If I create a publication with one table as an article, and then change the schema of the published table, for example, by adding a column to the table, will the new schema ever be applied at the subscribers? Answer. Yes. Schema changes to tables must be made by using Transact SQL or SQL Server Management Objects SMO. When schema changes are made in SQL Server Management Studio, Management Studio attempts to drop and recreate the table and since you cannot drop a published objects, the schema change will fail. Question 18. Is it possible to replicate data from SQL Server to Oracle? Answer. Yes, this can be done using heterogeneous replication. In SQL Server 2000, publishing data to other databases such as DB2 or Oracle was supported. However, publishing data from other databases was not supported without custom programming. In SQL Server 2005 and later versions, Oracle databases can be directly replicated to SQL Server in much the same way as standard SQL Server replication. Question 19. How will you monitor replication activity and performance? What privilege do you need to use replication monitor? Answer. The easiest way to monitor replication activity and performance is to use replication monitor, but you can also use the below tools to monitor replication performance. TSQL commands Microsoft SQL Server Management 
studio to monitor replication, a user must be a member of the sysadmin fixed server role at the distributor or a member of the REPL monitor fixed database role in the distribution database. A system administrator can add any user to the REPL monitor role, which allows that user to view replication activity in replication monitor. However, the user cannot administer replication. Question 20. Can you tell me some of the common replication DMVs and their use? Answer. Sys.dm underscore REPL underscore articles contains information about each article being published. It returns data from the database being published and returns a row for each object being published in each article. Sys.dm REPL underscore schemas contains information about each table and column being published. It returns data from the database base being published and returns one row for each column in each object being published sys.dm underscore repl underscore traninfo contains information about each transaction in a transactional replication Question 21. Explain about snapshot replication. Answer. As the name implies, snapshot replication takes a snapshot of the published objects and applies it to a subscriber. Snapshot replication completely overrides the data at the subscriber each time a snapshot is applied. It is best suited for fairly static data or if it's acceptable to have data out of sync between replication intervals. A subscriber does not always need to be connected, so data marked for replication can be applied the next time the subscriber is connected. An example use of snapshot replication is to update a list of items that only changes periodically. Question 22. Explain about transactional replication. Answer. Transactional replication. As the name implies, it replicates each transaction for the article being published. To set up transactional replication, a snapshot of the publisher or a backup is taken and applied to the subscriber to synchronize the data. After that, when a transaction is written to the transaction log, the log reader agent reads it from the transaction log and writes it to the distribution database and then to the subscriber. Only committed transactions are replicated to ensure data consistency. Transactional replication is widely applied where high latency is not allowed, such as an OLTP system for a bank or a stock trading firm, because you always need real-time updates of cash or stocks. Question 23. Explain about merge replication. Answer. Merge replication. This is the most complex types of replication which allows changes to happen at both the publisher and subscriber. As the name implies, changes are merged to keep data consistency and a uniform set of data. Just like transactional replication, an initial synchronization is done by applying snapshot. When a transaction occurs at the publisher or subscriber, the change is written to change tracking table. The merge agent checks these tracking tables and sends the transaction to the distribution database where it gets propagated. The merge agent has the capability of resolving conflicts that occur during data synchronization. An example of using merge replication can be a store with many branches where products may be centrally stored in inventory. As the overall inventory is reduced it is propagated to the other stores to keep the databases synchronized.